checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. So let's get this news going. Sammy Guevara was injured at the Ring of Honor tapings. Actually, Kelly Madden was as well. Both of them stretchered out. And I don't have an update on Kelly, but I was told that Sammy likely suffered a concussion but seemed to be okay later in terms of, you know, not like he's headed to the hospital and in the ICU or anything. It's never good when you get a concussion. But uh, multiple people told me that he seemed okay was the, was the word. The uh, show itself, nine, uh, an, uh, two and a half hours. It's a long show. And I think I need to talk about at least three things. First, and I don't know, I don't know what's going on, okay? So this Blackpool Combat Club deal. So John Moxley has been speaking in riddles, okay? And they did a segment early and then they came out after the main event and they're setting up John Moxley and Brian Danielson. And John Moxley does his promo. And he says, none of this is about me. None of this is what I wanted. I am fighting for something much bigger than myself. If any of this was about me, I'd have put you out of your misery years ago. And then Excalibur said, who is forcing Moxley's hand in this? Okay. So this has led to all sorts of speculation that Shane McMahon is behind all of this, okay? Now, this is what I can tell you. I can't tell you he's not, okay? But, you know, there was this Shane McMahon meeting with, uh, with Tony Khan that got captured surreptitiously. There was the meeting... Shane happened to run into Mercedes Monet. Mercedes did an interview like yesterday saying, I hope Shane McMahon comes to AEW. The Young Bucks just happened to be on an airplane with him. And so, like, everybody is just, they're all running with it, okay? Now, I am not going to sit here and tell you that Shane McMahon is not going to AEW, okay? I don't know that. But I do not believe that there is any deal done between Shane McMahon and AEW. I believe, I believe 100%, okay, that uh, the Young Bucks and Shane McMahon meeting was a coincidence. I believe 100% the Shane McMahon-Mercedes meeting was a coincidence. I have had people insist to me that the Shane McMahon and Tony Khan picture was leaked, okay, and that they didn't mean it for it to get out. So, number one, I don't think they're shooting an angle that they are pres that, that like the plan is for Shane McMahon to be involved when Shane McMahon does not have a deal with this company. I don't believe that, okay? The other thing is, like, just from a fan standpoint, have you been watching these Blackpool Combat Club videos and angles and everything? And have you seen, like... Shane McMahon's character, how would these things fit together? How? I mean, I don't buy it for a second. I don't know if Excalibur was told to say that line. I don't know if he just said it from listening to Moxie and what he was saying. But I don't think that Shane McMahon is behind this brand new Blackpool Combat Club. Hey, listen, I didn't think he was coming back like eight years ago or whatever to WWE and he did. But I don't think that's what's going on here. I guess we'll see. Why can't you see it with Shane McMahon's character, considering he fancies himself a fighter, you know, with the quick His shuffle and His character is like the rich kid. He does a Whoa. silly dance. Hold he on goes now. back and forth like this. I mean, come on. He, you're no. remembering the Mean Street Posse version of Shane. But since that time, I mean... Comes out to the music and dances every time. Yes, he does. Of course he does. Hector Macho Camacho would do that as well, too. People come out and dance during their entrances before their fights. But this is the guy that pushed Raw Underground. This is the guy that wanted to buy Pride. This was the guy that was interested in buying UFC and doing all of this stuff. So to have a dark force of Moxley to be the leader of a group. I'm not saying that I'm endorsing it or I think it's going to happen, but I think you can portray Shane in that form. Now, 
He's a comic also, book character. He's a cartoon. B well, this BCC is like serious, deadly serious. Yes. Well, if Shane McMahon wearing all black is the benefactor, and we find out later on that the interview, you know, he tried to be nice to Tony Khan, and then he let the information out, and that's the problem with this company. And you know what? We need to bring this back. That's why this thing needs to be fixed. And maybe that's why Moxley was nice to Jack Perry and didn't beat up the Young Bucks. Remember, he walked by them. And maybe that would give a reason for the Young Bucks being vice presidents to actually have some gravity to it. So it's a lot of fantasy mm. booking. But as far as putting him in and inserting him into something with Moxley or a group, I could see that. Not going to happen. I don't think so. We had Will Ospreay and Ricochet for the international title. And, like, the match itself, it was funny because they used to work differently than they both work now, like six, seven years ago. But the fans wanted a match between the two of them from six and seven years ago, so that's what they did. It was like a video game, all sorts of nuttiness and crazy high spots. And then I did not like... The thing with this show is I didn't like some of the finishes on this show. So the match is, like, great. And then they do the double pin finish. Osprey hits the hidden blade, falls on top, but both of their shoulders are down. And so it's ruled a draw. And the fans are furious. But listen, hey, sometimes you need to do a draw, okay? So I would have ended it there. I would have had both guys want five more minutes, and then Takeshita comes in, kills him, and like there's heat on Takeshita for ruining this. But instead, they wanted more time, and so the Tony Khan character said, this match will continue. So as soon as you do that, now you're kind of telling the fans, okay, you are going to get a finish. Like, we gave you a non-finish, but this match must continue, so you're going to get a finish. Well, they went about 90 seconds, and then Takesh runs in, and now we got a DQ. Now the fans are really furious. So I would not have done it the exact way they did it. I was okay with a draw, and then somebody, you know, screws it up so there's not a three-way. But the way they did it just felt like, once you once you restart the match, now it's like you're promising the fans something, and then you immediately screw yeah. them. That's not like the that. end of the world, but it is one of those little things that could have been made better just because of doing that. But it was a great match. And then, uh, obviously, the main event was the Brian Danielson-Okada title versus title match. And, again, like the match itself, it was really good. I would not call it like a great match. They were not, both of them were not at their best here. But uh, the story was, both titles are on the line, but the Continental title's only on the line for the first 20 minutes. And nobody is allowed to interfere only for the first 20 minutes, because then it's not Continental rules anymore. So, first 20 minutes, they do a match, and as soon as that uh, ring announcer said, we're at 19 minutes, the fans started to get upset. And so, it ends up going 20 minutes which means the Continental title is no longer on the line. And then they lost a lot of the heat because the fans knew, all right, well, Daniels is going to win. I mean, he's not winning the Continental title now, so he's going to win the match, which is exactly what happened. They had uh, Pac and Claudio come out. Okada's distracted. Brian hits the uh, backslide for the pin. And then afterwards, you know, the heels go after Brian, and Wheeler runs down to make the save, and they set up a tag team match. So the thing to me about this was... That Moxley promo at the beginning of the show, it was so bizarre. It was like all they did was talk about Moxley and Brian at Wrestle Dream. They didn't even mention. It was like they were in a universe where this main event never got booked. It was not acknowledged in any way. It was like, I'm coming to the pay-per-view and I'm going to kill you, Brian Danielson. And so then they do this match here. And, you know, it's exactly as we said it was. And they do the angle afterwards for a tag match at the, uh, whatever they're calling it, Title Tuesday. But there's no titles on the line. And uh, and this is leading to Wrestle Dream. And to me, it was a match put together because they wanted Brian and Okada again. And, man, I don't know. So I talked about it yesterday. Like, what's the storyline with Daniel Bryan? Is his next match his actual retirement? I mean... I watched this match, and man, this guy is beat up. He did the run up the ropes, backflip. I mean, you could tell when he landed, his knees are killing him. He did some other spot, and he, you could just tell his knees were killing him on that spot. Like, his neck is messed up. I've, I've been told by people that, like, 
It's, it's not like his head's about to fall off that bad, but this guy is so beat up, and he's just a complete physical wreck. And they're, they're playing it up like his first loss, he's never going to wrestle again. And AEW has always been big about stipulations. You know, that Cody stipulation, never challenge for the AEW title again. And, you know, Brian himself in his promo, as we talked about yesterday, flat out said his full-time career would end. But the announcers are pushing it like his entire career is over. He will never have another match again. So I don't know what's going on, man, but he needs to go home for a while. He's wrecked. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.